Hello, my name is Fran Sands and welcome to MyBoxingCoach.com. In this video, I wanted to talk you through the first 15 to 30 minutes that I spend with someone who's beginning their journey in boxing. Now, this can be for one person when I'm working one-to-one -one in this in this gym with a, with a new boxer, or it could be with a whole group of them, 15, and it's not unusual for me to have 15 or 20 kids in that in that ring at, at any time and you know it's got to be snappy it's got to be relevant because when you've got 15 kids you know half, half of them could have shared a family-sized bag of skittles just before they walk through the door you know they've got all the predictability of a, a rusty hand grenade and you, you need to keep them engaged so the point of these this first 15 to 30 minutes i want to do a, a few different things i want to give them some a minimal skill set that they can work with in their own time, that they can help develop, that they can feel that they've learned something. So five skills we develop in this first section. I want them to understand the concept of hit and not be hit. I want them to get that into their head immediately when they walk through this door. I want them to understand what it means to be under fire, what it means to have someone throwing punches at you. And again, get that introduction made nice and early. And I want them to understand that counter-punching is really important. It's actually boxing counter-punching. I've always found it very difficult to split the two. The point being, if someone tries to hit you, you've got to try and hit them back. This is not news to anyone. It shouldn't be. You know, you don't walk through life allowing people to, to try and hit you. And a boxing ring is exactly the same. Always looking to hit back. So, we go through these five skills. I'm going to whistle through this as quickly as I can. I'm not going to take 15 to 30 minutes. I'm going to walk you through what I would do, exactly what I would do um, with this group or with this individual. The first thing I would do is teach them the stance. The stance is everything. Without good feet, everything else will fail. It's a cliche, but it's true. So I would give them seven steps because I want this to be repeatable. I want it to be instilled. I want them to understand how to do this. So the seven steps to getting into our basic stance. Regardless of whether you're southpaw or orthodox, you just switch it round of your, of your southpaw, I will show it in orthodox. Step number one, we take a step back. Uh, so that our a nice comfortable step back along this centre line. Step number two, front foot goes to 45 degrees. So that the line on the floor goes from the toe to the heel. Step number three, we bend the legs. Step number four, hands up. Step number five, palms in. Step number six, chin down. Step number seven, up on the balls of our feet. Then as they're in this stance, I talk them through the important things about it. The, the reason the palms come in, working from the top down, okay? So we keep our chin nice and relaxed down into our chest. We don't want our head up here, all right? As soon as you start getting a hit, hit here, problem. So we keep there nice and relaxed. Our hands are nice and relaxed and open by our face. The only time they clench is as we, our hands hit the target. We turn our palms in so that our elbows come in. I don't care what your name is. If your elbows are up here and you're showing this body, you're going to be in trouble. You might be the toughest man this side of Coyote Creek or the toughest woman this side of Coyote Creek. That, getting hit here, makes the toughest fall. Okay, so your hands are tucked in there. Your body weight is nice and central and you have this line going from the toe to the heel. Then what I'll do, I'll walk around and I'll, I'll, I'll bash them. If I'll go around every kid in that ring and I'll bash them with my hands from side to side, just so they see that that centre line gives them lots of stability. They're able to buff it, they're able to work shots and they're able to take shots coming in, okay? Then I'll tell them to shake off because it hurts that rear leg because your body weight's on the back leg, you get a bit tight. We shake off our legs. Then we go through exactly the same steps again, instilling this process of building the stance. Feet together, one foot out of the side of the line. Right leg, step back, front foot, 45 degrees, knees bent, hands up, palms in, chin down, balls of the feet. Exactly the same again. Then I tell them to break their stance. This offset is key. I want them to understand that all of the time. So I tell them to bring that foot behind the line. Then I walk around and rather than buffet them, I use one finger and I push them. I try it. Get someone to get, it, get your stance. Go like that. Make sure the front foot is behind the back foot so it's a broken stance. 
and have someone push you and you you have no balance so they understand that and they you know they try the individual or try the hardest to stay in place but it's impossible all you have to do is that that builds this understanding that that offset is absolutely vital okay so we've broken the stance we've shown them why that offset is so important they are beginning to really understand now we break down, we shake our legs, then we go through the process again, the seven steps. Step one, foot, right foot, step back, front foot 45 degrees, knees bent, hands up, palms in, chin down, balls of the feet. Then we want to learn about moving forwards and backwards. It would be marvellous if we got in the ring and just stood there, the opponent came running up to us, we hit them, they moved away, they came back, hit them, moved away. We've got to be able to move to and from contact with the opponent. So we're in our stance. Simple rule, when we move forward, you push off the back leg, front leg lifts, and we step forward. When we're going backwards, we push off the front leg, back leg lifts, and we go back. Really simple. We move this far, we don't try and cover too much ground. We make sure that our front foot stays at 45 degrees, we make sure that we don't break our stance as we move. And then we'll just go through a process, where I'll just go, I'll issue two commands. We go forwards, and we go backwards. And they understand this. It's simple, it's clear. Then we shake off. Okay, so we're whistling through this. This is probably about 10 or 15 minutes in. Then we want to learn our first punch. We go through the steps. We get into our stance. Then we learn the jab. Push off the front leg, hand goes out, comes straight back. The only time the fist clenches is when it hits the target. Our palm is down. We don't throw our body weight after the jab. We just work through these little things. We instill it. So then I'll go, we're going to issue three commands, forwards, backwards, or jab. And make sure that we, we spot fault. We don't want elbows raising. So I'll say forwards, backwards, jab, jab, backwards, forwards, jab. And they will just do these simple moves. And we spot faults and we fix things. Then we incorporate the duck. Our first defensive move, and it's simple. Arse, stick your arse out, keep your back straight, bend. Important thing when you duck is to keep an eye on an opponent. Now here's where we have a little bit of fun with the kids. Especially the kids love this type of stuff. Once I've, so once we've, we, we've done the duck, I'll go through the process again. Forwards, backwards, jab, duck. So you've got the kids going, or the individual going forwards. Duck, backwards, jab, jab, forwards, duck, forwards. You get the point. Then I say, right, give me your stance. What I want you to do is hit that hand with your jab as I walk around and then duck. And I say to them, especially the kids love this, I say, look, it's really important that you duck. In all of the years I've done this coaching, I've only ever knocked out four children. Only four. It was an accident. I didn't mean to do it. We've just got it. You know, these things do happen. It's a boxing club. And you see the look on the face and they all kind of go. So you go, okay, but the really important thing is that you jab and you duck. And as they throw their jab and immediately duck, I throw this big hook, whistle it over the head. And I'm going, right, I'm going to get you this time. As you know, I don't, don't get quite so animated with an adult. But I get the point, and it gives them this understanding that you jab and you duck, jab, duck. You don't wait for a shot to come back before you duck. You build these sequences of punch and duck. So now you're beginning to understand the concept of hit and not be hit. And the kids love it. They, they'll obviously do stuff like this. And then you've got to get them, look, no, keep your eyes on me as you do your duck. So then they understand as they duck that the punch there is missing them. And they are not panicking, they panic less, so they keep an eye on it. They've got a system to avoid this incoming hook. And obviously then, when you jab, if you do a duck and jab to the body, throw a jab, you've then got a jab to the body. Jab head, jab body. So we go through the process, forwards, backwards, jab, duck, jab, jab body. Forwards. So we've learned five skills, six really, if you think about the jab to the body. 
We've got in and out of the stance eight or ten times. Then we've, we're done. By that time, if I've spent 20 minutes with a group of kids, you are getting to the very limits of their ability to pay attention, right? We need to go on to something else. With an adult, they can go on much longer. But they have this core set of five skills. Next time they come in this gym, they, are, they have some degree of self-sufficiency. They can practice that. I, as a coach, want to see them practice it. If I see them practicing that with discipline, I'm immediately drawn to that person. I'm immediately thinking, that's someone who's working hard at what we've taught them, who's trying to improve. I have this concept called kettle time boxing. I'm, a, I'm an Englishman. I drink tea till it's coming out my ears, right? When the kettle's boiling, you don't have to be in the midst of a session to be learning this stuff. When the kettle's boiling, use the lines on your kitchen floor between the tiles. In the stance, move forward, jab, oh, jab, jab. Move backwards, jab, duh. Spend a couple of minutes. The more time you're in that stance, the more time you're executing them skills, the better they become. Picasso once said, learn the, learn the, learn the skills like a professional so that you can break them. Learn the rules like a professional so that you can break them like an artist. You instill all of these really steady concepts. I'm going to stop there. I hope that that's been of use. I whistled through, I don't know how long it took, but I, I didn't want to drag it on, but I hope it's of use. Sign up to the Beginner Boxer Toolkit, a brilliant way to get you on your journey. It will help you really build a good boxing regime, regardless of whether you're new to the game, for fitness, for competition, you name it. There is a massive amount of help in that book for you. Otherwise, my name's Fran Sands. I'd love to know what you thought about this as well, so drop a comment. And this is mybox and coach .com. Thank you.